I have my eight teapots, uh, and I want to try things that I don't do do normally. So I'm going to experiment a little bit. Um, so my slip that I used in the last uh, um, video, which is about a month ago now, I'm going to I just mixed it up and stirred it up, and I'm going to try sl slip trailing, dotting, whatever. I'm not sure yet. So I'm just going to play. work like this and this rubber bulb is really stiff and I've had carpal tunnel surgery on both hands so um, so if you're gonna be doing slip trailing uh, you might want to get some softer rubber bulbs this rubber bulb is 40 years old <laughs> so um, I had this so long ago and I used to do slip trailing um, you know in a big way so uh, I'll, I'll post a picture here of one of my slip trail pieces But that's a simple decoration and under, with 10 lacoon now you can have the dark brown clay with the white slip over the top. Um, so it will change the texture but also the actual um, variation in color that the 10 lacoon will give. So that'll be interesting to see. But I bought one of these, <laughs> a little set of these off Amazon. Uh, so these are available, and this has my black slip in it, and I think it's a bit runnier, so I'm going to have to be very careful. But I put the biggest of the nozzles on that they actually sold with these. Um, so we'll see how this works. And whenever you're doing it, you tap like that. It actually puts the air that's in the clay up to the top so you don't get like spits of air coming out. You know, overdoing it is very easy with something like this. So I think leaving it like that, and I'm going to carve some fluting in some of the areas too, um, but keeping it simple like that is probably a good idea. After looking at it for a few minutes, I'm going to do something on the lid. Also, whenever you're slip trailing, your hand has to be comfortable. So make sure that you're holding the bulb when it's, you know, this is that black stiff one. So I've got to make sure I can put pressure on it without really hurting my hand. Um, and that orange one is so much easier. But here I'm just going to do some little stripes, I think, in this one little area. doing it again there. The slip can be thickened by adding some vinegar to it. But I'm just doing it, so I'm not going to do that. Because I like keeping... Okay, so, yeah, I like keeping my slips fairly consistent, so keep changing them, you never know. And it gets moldy. Once you add vinegar to something, it starts to get moldy. So remember, ten makus are opaque, so the, a lot of this won't show up. It's going to be much more subtle, more of a texture, I would think. So I shouldn't do too many pieces, otherwise they may not work anyway. So what can we do up there?
I could obviously cover this whole thing and it'd just become way too much. And that, I think keeping it simple, and especially since we don't know if the glazes will cover this up completely, we may end up with just a ripply texture. That is a traditional slip trailing pattern. You can look that up in Thomas Toft uh, from the 14th century, I think it was, and, um, and even um, uh, John Pollock's in the 20th century in the UK. And I have the pieces I did uh, back in the 1980s. Now, should I do this or wait till it's dry? I'm gonna try it now, because this flows so fast. It's a race with that slip. If I was going to do a lot of these, I might thicken it up a little bit. But that worked. I think you can see it. It's, uh, I don't know what you would call that. Some herringbone pattern of some sort. But, um, but it is a traditional slipwear pattern. And I can stick this back on now without it touching. I don't know if I should do it on the lid or not. Maybe I can do a little bit. I like the lid to look like it's from this teapot. Actually, why don't I do the lid at a better angle? Now, learning from my other piece where the handle got in the way, I'm going to try doing it from the handle to the other side. And then I stopped, but can I get a continuous flow here? And did I get to a different level? Well, it's better. That's just a guide, anyway, for what I want to try and do. So, uh, so let's do the dots again. See, I'm going to try and do an equilateral triangle. Let's see. I should probably measure this, of course. And I'm going to look to this one, so it's just a halfway. That's fairly even. I didn't do too badly. So now I'm going to do my triangle thing again. Over That's the one, so let's see if I can get up there. I can't do it so you can see it. That's the it can go down. Well, it's under the handle, so you can't see that too much, but that was a little difficult to get in there. Now the black, and this is so runny. This was so much easier. But we got a pattern. Not a very even one. I wouldn't be submitting that for my A levels. And let's do something on the lid again. These raw orange ones are really nice to squeeze, they don't take much pressure. Be so weird to see all this and then 
when I put the dark Temaku glazes over these lot, you won't see any of this probably in, you know, not in contrast way anyway. It'll just be that texture. We'll see. And with Randy's red especially, because you have to apply that really thick. Okay, so let's see if I can do a line again. Trying to get down to the... I don't want to go below because it's hard to slip trail from underneath. It's always that last little bit that you can't get to. I think we just need dots. This is the one that has sort of an organic form. So I think I'm just going to be very minimal here. Just that little tiny bit just there. You know, leave it when the Middle Ages they used to use little pottery jugs with thin, tiny point nozzles to do slip training like this. <laughs> it's incredible that they could do it. To finish the last one here, I'm just going to do some stripes again. I'm just trying to get the, the idea of the slip, but how the Tenmiku gold and the other Tenmikus look on different colors of clay on the same piece. So I'm playing, um, and that's part of it. I'm, you know, sort of coming up to 69, and I still like to play. Um, the the three glazes I really want to use on these are Randy's Red, Tomato Red, and Harris Ten Maku. Um, and I'm trying to see what the happens with different colors of clay. Um, so we got red clay, white clay, black clay to see the three color variations you'll get with one glaze. Um, uh, it's just uh, you know, an experiment, but, um, but it'll make it exciting to unpack the kill. Well, okay. so, um, so the next thing you'll see these being trimmed, and we'll get to that now.
So now after I've just done the fluting, um, you've got to trim them. And I recommend making yourself a little lid chuck to do, so whatever size your teapots you have to make sure it can fit in that inside and then you have a lid chuck so you can turn your teapots upside down on the wheel. <coughs> if you don't have a giving grip, turning teapots is pretty difficult or anything that has to sit up like this because you'd have to fasten the chuck and then be secure enough with your chuck that this actually doesn't move. So a giving grip here is very useful. You could just sponge the bottom of your teapots, of course, you don't have to trim them. <coughs> These are a little soft, but I want to do some chattering on some of them anyway, so I want to get them trimmed. This is uh, the 31st of December. Now I may glaze the bottoms of these because this clay doesn't walk if you put it on stilts. This is uh, number 80 from Laguna. It's the clay that works best I found with Randy's Red. That one there's no room to do chattering obviously. I've had these drying really slowly in my damp cupboard and the handle is still drying faster than the body, so I'm a bit worried about cracks in the handles, but we'll see. This is also the time when you should put a hole in your spout. If you're going to have a tall rim like this, it will force the liquid up through the spout. Um, so if you have a hole in here, the pressure doesn't build up and therefore you, your liquid doesn't rise when you put the lid in. And you can use a drill, or you can just use a little loop tool like this, and just sort of use it like a drill. Sorry about that. Forget it sounds really noisy on the video. So you got a little hole in there. Make sure you get rid of the burr. Okay, so if you're going to have a tall flange, put a little hole in it. These are a little soft, which is why I'm using a loop tool for trimming. And then I can decide what to do about doing a little chatter. Sure 
clips on the tightly. 